Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Marvel Champions video. Um, in, as part of yesterday's uh, stream, I believe Fantasy Flight released some more spoilers for Ant-Man and the Wasp. So we're going to go through all the new cards here. So starting off with Ant-Man, uh, first up we have Army of Ants. Uh, one cost support, it generates a uh, physical resource when you discard it. It's um, Ants and it's Tiny. Um, and as a hero action, if you're in Tiny um, hero form... Exhaust army of ants to deal one damage to an enemy. So basically you pay one, one to one ratio there with um, basically one resource to basically essentially do one damage if you're in tiny form. And then whenever you're in tiny form, you can exhaust this to uh, deal one damage. So let's say you, you know, you start off your, um, your turn in tiny form, you do some stuff, you exhaust this, do a damage, flip into giant mode or giant form, and then do some stuff as well. And then maybe play a card like Resize to go back into Tiny Form, setting up your next turn, where you can get this one extra damage off per turn. So, I think that's a pretty good card. Um, it's also very thematic to Ant-Man, so he's got the entire like army of ants that he can basically uh, that he can work with. And I do like that they can basically ping one damage, so like if you're going up against like Ultron, you can basically exhaust this to get rid of one of the Ultron drones, depending on um, how much health they have. Um, I believe they come in with one. There are cards that can make those stronger, but um, this is a good way to maybe potentially get rid of um, a couple of them. So basically, you could um, basically ping them, and then let's say like you know ping them with this, uh, deal a damage in tiny form as well, flip to hero form, deal more damage, go back eventually, and then do this again. So that is Army of Ants. We're gonna move into our next card. And next up, we have Giant Stomp. It's a three-cost event. Generates an energy resource when you discard it. It's attack and it's giant. So play only if you are in giant hero form. And as a hero action, as an attack, deal one damage to um, each minion. Then deal eight damage to an enemy. Um, I really like this card. Again, like we mentioned Ultron earlier. Uh, this is a good way to basically, um, if you have a bunch of Ultron, Ultron drones, you can basically hit all of them with this and then deal eight damage to Ultron or some other enemy. So I think that's really good. Really good way to kind of like ping damage onto a bunch of different minions as well as then um, redirect eight damage to potentially like the main villain or um, if they have like, if you have like, you're fighting like a really strong, a really strong minion as well, you can deal additional damage there. Like let's say you were playing against, um, against Ronin in single player. This would actually be able to get rid of Ronin. So basically you would um, come in Deal one damage because I think Ronin was like nine health per player, so like a minion that basically gets stronger the more players that are playing. Uh, basically, you do one damage with this, and then you do eight damage as well. So that would get rid of Ronin in one shot, which is pretty strong. But um, again, works really well against um, you know like just like multiple uh, enemies. I like that it can also basically if you have a lot of enemies that have uh, toughness status cards, this will allow you to basically hit all of all the all the all the minions and then all those toughness status cards would also then uh, go away they wouldn't take any additional damage from the giant stomp but you at least would get rid of the toughness cards or toughness uh, status cards and then uh, hit something else for eight so that is giant stomp really like that card uh, we're gonna move into our next card and next up we have Ronin uh, three cost um, three cost ally generates an energy resource when you discard it uh, he's a he's an Avenger comes in with one thwart two attack with one incidental incidental damage each uh, comes in with three hit points and then uh, he gets plus one thwart plus one attack while an upgrade is attached to them so uh, basically he becomes a uh, two three at that point so you're probably definitely gonna want to get an upgrade or yeah get an upgrade onto them to make use of that because he only has a or they only have uh, three health so um, basically you're gonna be taking one damage depending on what you do either way but you can get a little bit more out of it if you have that upgrade on of them um, could be a pretty good minion or a pretty good ally so uh, can stick around for a couple turns depending on what you need you can thwart or attack and then potentially you can get more of it out if you do add an upgrade onto them so that is Ronin we're gonna move into our next card and next up, we have Moxie. It's a zero-cost event. Uh, generates a mental resource when you discard it. And as a response, so hero hero response, after you change form, your hero gets plus one thwart, plus one attack, and plus one defense until the um, end of the round. 
So um, you can do some stuff in one form, and then basically play this as in a response to, tr to changing forms, and then have a stronger form for your uh, the rest of that round. So let's say you're tiny, you then change form, you do this, and you can then make giant form uh, even stronger by giving him, um, you know, either an, an additional thwart, an additional attack, and an additional defense. So that is Moxie. We're going to move into our next card. And next up, we have the Power Gloves. Uh, one cost upgrade generates a mental resource when you discard it. It's um, armor and also tech. Um, attached to an Avenger ally, max one per ally. Um, as a response, after, um, a, after the attached ally attacks or thwarts, deal one damage to an enemy. That's, I think, really good, especially with... Um, allies that you're using mostly for thwart because you're going to be getting rid of threat and that kind of thing and i do like once you do that if you have these gloves on them they'll also be able to hit something uh for one damage as well they can damage the, uh, the villain they can damage a minion um but also uh basically it can potentially deal if you're using it on a minion that does a lot of attack it's just going to make their attack stronger i do like say like maybe putting something like this on maria hill uh, Maria Hill, still one of my favorite allies in the game, but, uh, but what you can do with her is you can basically play her, use her to thwart, uh, and have the power gloves on her, and then um, she'll also be able to then ping a damage as well. So those are the power gloves. We're going to move into our next card. And we are back with our final card from Ant-Man. After this, we're going to move into our new Wasp cards, but this is Care for Cassie. This is Ant-Man's Obligation. So, uh, give to the Scott Lang player. You may flip to alter ego form and then choose to either exhaust Scott Lang and remove Care for Cassie from the game, or choose to discard one card from your hand. You cannot change form until um, your next turn ends, then discard this obligation. Either of those are not not very good. These obligations definitely give you a tough choice. But um, so you're either going to uh, have to exhaust Scott Lang, or choose choose a, choose to discard a card, and then you're not able to change form for um until the end of your next the, the end of your next turn so ant-man is kind of dependent on basically flipping between tiny and giant form to uh, do different things because a lot of conditions a lot of things will trigger once he flips into either of those forms and not being able to do that for basically an entire turn could be uh pretty devastating so this is definitely like one of the obligations that i i really don't like um I think it might be better just to kind of exhaust Scott, exhaust him at that point, and then uh, potentially find a way to hopefully if you have a card that lets you just uh, ready your ready your hero or ready your alter ego form, and then just flip into either tiny or giant form from there, because uh, losing also losing the ability for him to really do anything for an entire turn is pretty brutal as well. But then so is not being able to um, discarding a card and not being able to transform is also pretty bad. So. That is Care for Cassie. That's our final card for Ant-Man. We're now going to move over into our new cards from the Wasp. We'll be right back with those. All right, and we are now back with our new cards for Wasp. So first up here, we have the Bio uh, Synthetic Wings. So two cost upgrade generates a uh, an energy resource when you discard it. It's an item, and it's also uh, it's also tech. Uh, Wasp gains the aerial trait. So that's that's good. Um, and then as an interrupt, when you would take dam any amount of damage, if you were in tiny form, um, tiny form, exhaust biosynthetic wings to prevent one of that damage. So she's basically able to fly, and then uh, she's in tiny form, she's basically going to be harder to hit. She's flying around and small, so this will allow you to prevent um, one damage. That is pretty good, especially if you, were to, if you were to defend and then also exhaust these wings. That could be a good way to actually not take any damage from an attack, depending on how much damage is being done. So those are pretty good. I'm, I'm waiting to kind of see what other, if she has any kind of cards that are dependent on her being aerial. Like I know, for example, like in the Iron Man deck, Iron Man has the rocket boots, which you could, you, you could exhaust those. And I think you discard like a mental resource, you exhaust the boots, and then he gains aerial. And then he has the rocket punch, which does, I forget exactly how much damage it does, but it does some damage. And then if you're aerial, it does like double the amount of damage or something like that. So I'm kind of waiting to see what other cards they have for her that are going to basically um, either require you to be aerial or have it a, have a bonus for being in aerial form. So those are the biosynthetic wings. We're going to move into our next card. And next up um, as an ally, we have Wasp. This is Janet Van Dyne. So a zero-cost ally. 
generates a uh, mental resource when you discard it. Uh, one thwart with one incidental, incidental damage, three attack with one incidental damage, and zero hit points. But she gets plus one hit point for each pimp counter on her. And then as an interrupt, when she enters play, you can place one pimp counter on her to a max of three for each energy resource you overpaid for Wasp's cost. So basically, if you have three cards that have energy symbols on them or energy resource symbols, you can discard those in addition to playing Wasp. She'll then uh, basically have um, three health, and then it'll, she'll, she'll basically still have one thwart and three attack. The three attack, I think, is huge. So even if you only have, like, one or two, um, you know, pimp counters on her, she's still able to get uh, three damage off. And if you have, like, again, have two or three of those counters on her, so if you pay two energy resources, you'll be able to have her um, do that, potentially do that again in a future turn, unless she, you know, takes damage from something else. But that is uh, pretty interesting, especially if you, if, you have a, if you have a way to, like, return her to your hand or use something like Make the Call to get her back. And uh, I'm not sure if that would actually uh, work with, with her or not. But um, anything that you can use to basically, like, bounce her and then play her again. Like, I, knew the, I know the new, um, the new Mockingbird from the um, Hawkeye, Hawkeye deck has a way that you can basically pay to get her back to your hand to prevent a bunch of damage. Uh, she does cost three resources to, to play, but that's a good way to prevent all damage and still get her back. So it would be cool if there was kind of going to be, like, uh, maybe some ally recursion that you could use on her. Because even if you just do, let's say you do one energy resource to pay for the wasp cost, you're still basically paying one resource for uh, three damage, or or one uh, one thwart, depending on what you do. So again, she gets one health basically per um, ener per pib counter, and those pib counters are gained by overpaying her cost of zero by discarding energy resources. So I think this is a pretty cool card. I had a theory they were going to be doing her. Um, once they once they kind of spoiled the um, the Hank Pym card as an ally for the Ant Man deck, I was thinking they were going to do the original the original Wasp as well. And here we have her as an ally, and she is a card that can go into any aggression deck. It looks like so she's not specific to um, to Wasp's deck, but she can go into any deck after as well. So that's pretty cool. So that is that is Wasp. We're going to move into our next card. And next up we have Boot Camp. It's a three-cost support. Generates a mental resource when you discard it. It's a location. Uh, play any under any player's control. Max one per player. Each ally you control gets plus one attack. So that's pretty good as well. Um, so basically, let's say you have some some strong allies or even some allies that only do like one damage. Um, you can basically get boot camp out, and basically it's going to give all of your allies plus one attack. Pretty simple, but pretty strong as well. Especially if you if you have like a lot of allies, you can then basically just make them all stronger and then attack with them and do even more damage. So that uh, again, pretty basic, but pretty good as well. So that is boot camp. We're going to move into our next card. And next up, we have Spider Man. This is Miles Morales. So um, a three cost ally generates a physical resource when you discard it. Uh, one thwart to attack with one incidental damage each. He comes in with three hit points. He's a champion. And as a response, after you play Spider-Man from your hand, choose thwart or attack. Spider-Man gets plus two to the chosen power until the end of the phase. That's pretty good. So he's, he's, he costs three. Uh, he's going to take... He can be around for up, up to three uh, turns, basically, if he doesn't take any damage from anything else. So if he just takes uh, incidental damage from uh, thwarting or attacking, he can be around for, you know, up to three turns. And I do like that he get unless you like heal him throughout with like other um, other cards, but I do like you could choose to get either plus two thwart or plus two attack. Uh, so you're either gonna be basically doing um, three uh, three thwart or four attack on the th the very first turn that he enters play. And especially if you have a way to to ready him, um, you could potentially get more damage out of that as well. So he's a gray card, so he'll fit into into any deck. And I know there's some, there are some cards in leadership that let you ready an ally. So basically, you can play him, give him plus two attack, attack with him, use the card to uh, ready ready him and attack again with that um, increased ability. So you you don't get uh you won't get plus two to each, but you'll basically you'll choose be like, hey, I wanted to, to have extra thwart or I wanted to have extra attack. And then again, if you have a way to return it to your hand somehow. You could uh, do that again as well. You know, he does cost three uh, resources, so you're probably so you're probably not going to be able to do that 
all in like one turn or so. But you know, you can play him, give him plus two attack, um, attack with him, but maybe in, in a turn later, play a card that lets you return it to your hand. If you have three resources, you can then play him again, and then you can pump him, pump because you do have to play it from your hand to get that ability. So something like uh, playing it out of like a discard pile won't work. But I think that's a huge, a huge benefit to this version of Spider-Man is. Basically, what do you need? Do you need, do you need additional thwart or do you need additional attack? You basically play from your hand, choose which one of those aspects you want to use, either the thwart or attack, and then have it have it increase by two. So I really like the Spider-Man. It's pretty good. So that is the Miles Morales version of Spider-Man. I like that it's a basic, so it can go into any deck. But that's going to do for Spider-Man. We're going to move into our next card. And we are back with the power in all of us. This is a resource, and so it's a gray. You can go into any deck. It's a basic card. Uh, max 2 per deck. Uh, double the number of resources uh, this card generates when paying for a basic gray card. So um, I believe this is the first time they've done one of these for just basics. I know they have like the power of aggression, the power of leadership, the power of protection, and so on. Um, so um, those let you basically, if you're playing, like I have the power of uh, protection in my Captain America deck, and when I uh, play that, it generates... Um, if I'm playing, playing for a green card, I usually use it with Tackle, because Tackle is a protection card as well. So basically it generates uh, two resources toward Tackle, and then if I have Captain America's um, the Super Soldier Serum, I can exhaust that to generate that um, that fist resource to have it do uh, the additional damage as, as well as stun. So this is cool because this is going to be basically the basic version of that. So if you were to pay or play that Spider-Man we just talked about, you could use this and get two resources for this, and then just pay one additional resource to get Spider-Man, because this resource basically counts as two if you're playing a gray card. So now we're going to have basically one for every color, so we have, we have basic, leadership, justice, and protection. So that is the power in all of us. We're going to move into our next card. And we have a couple new cards on this little card fan here. So first up is um, All for One. It's kind of partially obscured, so I'm not sure exactly what it's going to do. But it's a uh, looks like it's a justice card, so it's going to be a two cost event. It's an attack, so it says attack, uh, deal three damage, and exhaust any number of characters you control, and then it just says deal. So maybe it's deal damage equal to the number of characters you, you exhausted. So deal three damage, and then exhaust a bunch of your uh, your characters, and then I think you're maybe gonna maybe it's like something like deal one additional damage per character exhausted. That's what I'm kind of leaning towards. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, then we do have the wasp sting. So this is an event for uh, Wasp, it's part of her deck. It's an attack. As a hero action attack, if you are in giant form, deal a total of four damage divided among enemies as you choose. And a hero action attack, if you are in tiny form, deal five damage to an enemy. So two resources for that. I uh, can't tell what resource it generates when you discard it because that's covered. But um, pretty cool card here. So if you're in, depending on what form you're in, so if you have a bunch of uh, minions out there, you could basically, um, again, I'm going to go back to the Ultron drone uh, scenario. So let's say you're fighting with four Ultron drones. You, if you're, she's, she's a giant form, you could do um, four damage divided among those four drones. So you basically ping each of them for one and get rid of them. Or if you're in tiny form, you deal five damage. Um, so in tiny form, it's going to do it's going to do overall more damage. But I do like the flexibility of being in giant form and having it be being able to be spread out. So we normally with with Wasp. When she's a giant form, I believe it's her thwart and attack can be uh, divided. So it'd be, you basically do a thwart, a thwart action or a, an attack action, and you can then basically choose to hit multiple things. But I do like it if they give her if you if you only need to do five damage to the enemy to, to win the game, you can you know be in tiny form or flip in the tiny form and play Wasp Sting, and then just deal five damage to that enemy and win. So I do like the flexibility of this, and depending on what form you're in. You're either going to be doing four damage divided as you choose, or five damage. So if you're in giant form, you can still just do four damage to a single target. But I do like the flexibility of being able to just be like, "Hey, I'm in giant form. I'm going to hit these three things. I'm going to hit this guy for two, and hit these other two things for one each." Or in um, tiny form, "Hey, I just need to do five damage. Let's do that." So that is all for one and um, wasp sting. The um, all for one probably talk about more later as I see what see the rest of the card. And Wasp Sting looks uh, pretty self-explanatory. The only thing we don't know yet is what resource it generates when it's discarded. So that is that. We're going to move into our next card here. 
And next up here, we have a few cards from the Wasp's um, Nemesis deck. So it looks like it's Beetle is her her Nemesis. Uh, so she's a minion. Uh, one scheme, one attack with uh, four hit points. Looks like it generates two boosts if you were to flip it over as a boost card for an attack. Uh, we don't know exactly what she does yet. But uh, four health and a one scheme, one attack. And the other thing that we can see is Mother's Orders. That's her side scheme. So it comes in with two threat per player. It has three boost icons on it. And um, as an additional cost for each hero to make a basic attack, the hero must spend one of any resource. That could definitely add up. So like you don't want to have to constantly um, have to be spending resources to attack. I don't think this will be an issue in like a single in solo play because basically um, a lot of my characters can just like thwart that away pretty quickly because it comes in with two. It doesn't have an accelerator. It doesn't have an additional encounter card or anything like that. But it will make you spend those extra resources in order to attack. So you're definitely going to want to get rid of that ski probably pretty quickly. And next up after that is the Beetle Mark or Beetle Armor Mark IV. It's an attachment, but we don't know much about it because it's um, obviously obscured. So as we get closer to this set being out, I, I imagine more of these cards will be revealed. It will definitely show you what uh, Beetle's abilities are and what the um, abilities on the armor are as well. Uh, but I believe we have one card left, and we'll be right back with that. And the final card for the uh, Wasp deck is her Obligation. So this is Red Dreams. Give to the Nadia Van Dyne player. Uh, you may flip to Alter Ego form and then choose to either exhaust Nadia Van Dyne and remove Red Dreams from the game. Or discard each card with a printed mental resource from your hand and take one damage. Discard the obligation. So, again, not great options here. Um, sometimes I guess it's somewhat beneficial to maybe go with the first option because it then basically gets rid of it entirely. Um, if you don't do that, it gets discarded. It could potentially, again, show up later. Um, later in the game, or if the uh, villain deck gets um, runs out and gets reshuffled, you have the potential of it showing up again. But I don't think the second option is super terrible. Let's say you only have one card with a mental resource in your hand. You basically just discard that and take a damage. I think I might rather do that than have um, my character be exhausted, unless I definitely had a way to ready that character. So um, that is Red Dreams. That's going to do it for the, this video covering Ant-Man and the Wasp. These are pro, pro, uh, provided by the Hall of Heroes. Again, there'll be a link in the description to check out these, uh, these two articles. That's going to do it for now. I'll be back with more Marvel Champions videos as more cards get revealed. I want to thank you again for watching. As always, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time, and take care.